Hi, this is Christian, so welcome. In this video, we're going to implement the edit flight feature. So here is the Re React application. Uh, also, make sure that in your home component, this is the home component here, you know, add some stuff to your website, make it, um, you know, lively and interactive as, as possible. So basically, I just add two images here. Now, uh, also the about page, I mean, just add something there. And then the list here, Last time we already had the add component uh, um, feature added. So you're able to add data to your site. And now we're going to implement this edit feature. So when you click on the edit button here, as you will see in the URL, it's gonna load the edit uh, path with the ID field of one and then so forth. Okay, if you can grab that one and we're gonna load the data and pre-fill a form that will look very similar or identical to the ad form here. In fact, it is exactly the same form. Only thing is that we're going to pre-field this form with the data we pull from the flight list. Okay, so um, before we start though, I wanna make sure that we understand a high overview of what this looks like. So we're gonna go back to the Blackboard and look at this um, diagram down here, okay? So here is a workflow uh, diagram I put here. So maybe it will help you understand a little bit better. We're going to create uh, two additional com uh, components. Of course, the app.js here is the root component and we're gonna em embed the, uh, the edit flag component inside this app.js uh, component, okay? So the app.js is the root component and we're going to add that into the, um, you know, the route. So it will follow a route that will take us to the edit flight the edit flight is the child component that will contain the, I guess, business logic, some of the functionality that will process the data, the form, and then, you know, pass that data for up to the parent, okay? And then in the edit flight and there, I'm also gonna break out the form to another component called edit flight form, okay? So all, the, all this one has is basically just the form itself. And the reason why I do this is because um, the form has about six, six or eight fields and it'll make this file really bloated. So you can break it out into the other component. So it's just easier to, you know, separate things. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see here, the data source is contained or is maintained in the root component. So we don't want to have too many copies all over the place. What we want to do is you pass the data source from the parent component or the root component down to the child component here. So we pass down here the flight data. Okay, we maintain the state in the app.js file. We also pass down a function. This is also a callback function that we pass down to the child component called the update flight um, down the property here as well through the props because we want to be able to allow the child component to update the data via this update function, okay? So you pass that down here. And then in this edit flag component, we're going to create the edit form. And then to this form here, we just need two things. Basically the flight data, the single flight data that is needed to pre-fill the form field, as you can see here. And then also we need a new flight that contains the references to each of the form controls here. Okay. So again, this is an example of using the uncontrolled component. Otherwise, you will be a little bit differently here. So again, the purpose of this exercise is to have you experience uncontrolled components and control components, right? <clears throat> so, uh, and, and, and you know, in terms of design, the uncontrolled component may not be efficient in this example, but um, again, just to make sure you have enough experience to use both flavors, okay? So using the design, then we're gonna go and create our components. Here again, I already put some code in here. So how we're gonna do, we wanna create an edit flight.js file. Um, we're gonna input it into the app.js and then we're gonna create a route. It will look similar to this. So you should have already created your routes for all your path. I put it here just, I'm showing just the one for the edit here because we are going to you know, pass data and the parameters to a component. We're going to create a wrapper component. This is a component itself. So that will be that will pass the parameters to the edit flight so we can capture these uh, parameters in the URL, okay? As opposed to if you don't do that, then you know, it's a little bit different, but, um, and, and that's how, this is how you actually pass data to that parameter, okay? 
and yeah so again we some read more information here but we're gonna go ahead go ahead and then implement the app.js and then the other component just like you see here okay so let's go back to our code and start coding <clears throat> so back in here i'll make sure your app is already running uh, like you already saw and i'm gonna open the app.js file okay i need here so as you can see we have you know added all these components here already. If you have not created your bio on your homepage, make sure you create those um, also. And then we last time you already created your Affleck component, right? So you're able to add data to that. And here is the state for that as well. Your state, I have the, the map data and the flight data here. We did the little button to show form. Uh, there are again, a couple ways to do that, but that's just, that's a way you, you would have done that already. And then this is the, uh, the route. Okay, notice here we have, the, we have the route here, follow up by the route. Here I'm using the version six. So if you follow the older videos, you, um, you might have seen uh, a switch as opposed to a route. Um, that's the older version. Uh, so the router down version six uses a different uh, pattern, a little bit differently. So this is based on the, the newer version. Okay, so here is um, the ad flight for the flight information. We have the ad component here we have the about and the home. So notice I put two paths here for the home. Uh, the backslash is the root directory that takes you to the home page. And also I just added, so if you type slash home, that should also take you there as well. Okay, so just for convenience. <clears throat> and therefore we no longer need this because we are now able to use route. So you should be able to add in add flight, you know, edit flight, show other uh, elements using routes. Okay, so this is the route here. This is the path that goes to that pattern that loads the loads the component and the element uh, property. Okay, so um, and then my uh, functions I put in the bottom because it's just cleaner down this way. So we have the add component, we had the delete which we we will also need to implement, and the delete all. If you want to delete all your data, you can do that as well. But we're gonna add a function here to do the update. So actually, let me do the format like this. Okay. But before we do that, um, let's see, what do we need to do? Uh, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and create a component called edit. So I'm gonna go in here. Here's our add flight component. So notice also in my add flight, uh, add flight, right? Add flight here, I break the form into another component, I call it add flight form. Okay, so this is the add flight form here. So we'll be using exactly the same form. We're just going to modify this a little bit because we're not gonna use the control component <clears throat> anymore, right? We use the uncontrolled method. So we'll just make some tweaks in here and uh, to make it the uncontrolled um, uh, method. Okay, so uh, first thing is I want to, um, go into the app here and we're gonna create a component and you can create it you know, using code, using the command or um, you can just create it manually. Um, so I'm gonna just create one here called edit flight.js. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the one I have for the app flight, it will look custom. I would just, just this part basically, okay? I'm not gonna need any of this stuff here um, yet. We're not gonna do any validation yet later. So the F light, we need that one there. And both of these are going to be just function components. And the reason is because we're not going to retain any state, right? In the add form, notice that we use a class component because we actually contain states here uh, for the app data, but the added flight, I'm not gonna use the state at all because the state is actually coming from the parent. So we don't really need a state in this example here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create our edit flight and I will use the um, export function. You can export right away. You don't have to export the bottom. So, so you don't forget, uh, edit uh, flight. And we're gonna put here a props. Okay then that is the a function. Um, so actually I may, yeah, I, I need this because, so usually you don't need, I need it because I want to intercept or get the ID from the URL, okay? So you go through that using the, um, also create references, you need that as well, okay? 
So in here, what do I need in this application? So I have a return statement here. Okay. And then I just put that before I forget. And then inside here, um, you're going to do something, right? So you're going to put something like a, um, a div. So I'm going to copy my div from my div here. They're the main div one. It looks similar to this one. Okay, I'm going to copy everything here. So it has a similar output, all the classes here. I don't have to, you know, do all those stuff. It looks like that. I'm not going to uh, use any of this stuff for now. Okay, it will look just like that. And um, we'll just say not active flight, let's put uh, not added, but put, uh, added, but put added flight here. Okay, added flight. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And here, oh, probably I don't need this stuff here. Uh, we'll just put, we'll put the form right in here, okay? So this is the add, the added flight. And um, so what do we need? Okay, so before we do that, let's go to the app.js. I'm gonna close this now. Go to app.js, the root component. We're gonna import that in here, okay? So we gather one here, we're gonna import the, um, I'm gonna copy, just copy this one here and put it right below it. <clears throat> and this is the edit flight. So it will be edit flight, edit flight. Okay, we got our edit flight there. And then now we're going to add a path right in here. Again, the path will be similar to what you saw on Blackboard. So you can just copy and paste in here, it's fine too. And um, I'm gonna just uh, retype it. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna retype what happened in Blackboard. So it just it's just faster. Um, uh, maybe I'm just gonna copy and paste, okay? We'll make it a little bit faster. So you don't have to retype this over and over again. Uh, okay, so over here, I'm going to copy this part. Okay, this is the constant wrapper function and we'll paste it back into the code right inside the return, the render function here. Okay, um, yeah. And then we need to import this in in a minute. Uh, let's go back and create the path. So as you can see, it's in a render function and then the path route will look something like this. So copy this and add that into the route right in here. Okay, so this is our path. We'll go to the edit uh, URL with an ID. So the colon ID here is the parameter that we'll need to access in the uh, edit flag component. So here you can see that we are adding, uh, we, we're gonna need a use params. This is need to be imported. So you can, I think if there's a quick fix, you can do that and it will ask you to import. If it doesn't let you do that, it doesn't let you do. Usually if you type it, it will import automatically up here. Um, yeah, right in here, okay? If it's not here, uh, you can retype it. Sometimes it will do that for you. For example, if I go here, type in use param, like that. And then you will see that it automatically adds it for you up here, okay? If it's not just manually type it and put inside the React router dump up here, okay? And again, this is used for passing parameters to your flight, edit flight, okay? So here, we have the edit flight, we have the wrapper component, we add the flights here, we pass the data, the flight data, which is coming from the state, just like the other, just like the other ones here. The flight data contains the entire list of flight. We have a function to update the flight, which don't have it yet. So we're gonna go and create a function called update flight. And we're gonna go to the bottom here and uh, create a function right down here, call it um, um, update, Flight, yeah, you just got update flights fine. Update, okay, so we call it update flight. And we're gonna use error function here. So what we need back is the index and the updated flight data, okay? I'll call that so it's easy to understand. It's easy to see, you know, use meaningful variables here. And then what I have in here, is uh, the following. So we're gonna get um, a, um, let's see, uh, arrow, okay. Okay, so we'll implement this a little bit later, okay, to do here. We have the function ready. When, when the data comes back from the child component, we need to pass the index because we need to search where the ID is in the index. We want to pass the index, then all we have to do is very simple. We just update that. Um, actually, we can do it right now. It's actually very simple. 
right? So we got the we got the data coming back, and we're going to basically um, load a copy, copy a constant uh, copy of the flight from this state dot flight data. Okay, the entire new flight, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, I'll call it the same name. Okay, so I don't have to uh, you know rename it differently down there. And I'm gonna get the flight data of the index. Okay, it's gonna be assigned with the updated flight. Okay, that's it, right? And then we're gonna just basically call the set state. And we're gonna update the flight data, right? So remember again, I used the same name so that I don't have to do this, right? I don't have to do that twice, right? Because if you use different name, you have to do that, okay? So again, just a review. So now I updated my state and basically that is it. Okay, very simple to update data. Okay, so we save that. And then now up here, we already got this finished already. We passed the data, we passed the state. Okay, great. Now we have the parameter here that is also passed along inside the props over here. We see that that, that, that is a called uh, um, deep, um, uh, what do you call the rest of rest of parameters? It's, it's, that's an operator, it's a spread operator. Go to the props and then go to the parameters, just a, a common feature to do that in React. And then now we are pretty much kind of almost done with this one already. And so let's go to the edit flight. Now, when we call this function, we need to retrieve the data, the ID from the uh, URL, right? So we're gonna create here a cost ID. We get that from um, the use param, the same as before. This use param is an object, okay? If you if you if you see, uh, I'm not sure if it shows this, but um, usually it has a lot a lot of parameters. And one of these parameters we're interested in is the ID field. Okay, so this ID is really this ID right here. So if you call it, you know, AAA, then you will call it AAA. Okay, you get that from the URL through this function here. So um, that's why it's, it's called ID. Now I did the way I did here. I um, you can do this, or you can also do this. You can wrap this inside a square curly like this, and then remove the ID over here. What you're getting is basically what's called destructuring, right? You're just destructuring the entire object here. This returns an object. One of these fields is the ID field, okay? So I'm basically grabbing the ID from this, you know, parameters function and, and do that, okay? Um, you can do that, which is fine. The only thing about this though, is that make sure that when we do a search in the, the URL, or I mean in the data file, we need to convert this to integer, right, a number, because our data, if you look inside our model data, okay, these are numbers, right, not strings. So if you compare strings and numbers, you're not gonna find it when you compare. So make sure that um, when you do a search, you have to convert it to, um, you know, uh, integer. That's why what I want to do here is that I want to grab an ID here, and then I want to wrap the whole thing like this inside the int parts, right? And so I want to convert it right away. And so if you if you do this way, you cannot use the uh, curlies here, okay? So I'll basically create the ID and pull that from the ID. You grab the ID and then right away convert it to an integer. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so now we got that ID, what's next? Well, now we need to look inside the, the ID, uh, the data to find the index position. So I would do a constant index here. I'll look inside the props.flight data, okay? This flight data comes from, as you remember, comes from here. This is the one, contains the entire object of our flight. Look inside this list basically in here and find a matching ID. Once I found an ID, I'm gonna pull this entire record out, right? So I need to find the index position here. The index, the IDs are just named in a very simply one, two, three, four, five, but this could be like a thousand times. A thousand times it could be a random number. So we need to match this ID and then pull that record out. So I'm sure you already did this before. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So we use a um, find index function 
I'm going to pass in here. So every object in the in that list um, match the object ID against this ID. Okay. If it matches, then it will return a the index position. If there's no match, it will return a negative one. Okay. So this is where the comparison is important. I, I mentioned here. If you do not do in parse here, you have to in parse this ID. Okay, if you don't do that, it's not gonna match because, unless it's a string. So you, you have to do one the other way. Okay, they have to go the same type. I wanna make sure they are the same type. They use a strict mode to test, make sure it's the same, same type. Okay, so once we got that ID, then now we need to um, uh, find the flight from the index. So I'll create a constant flight. This is a single flight. I'll look inside the props dot flight data of that index. Okay, so I got that flight data. And then now I'm gonna use that to pass data over. Okay, so again, you have to check to make sure it's there, right? It's not guaranteed, it could be, it could, it could not be there. If it's not there, if it's negative one, you're not gonna get any flight data and your page will crash. So be, you have to handle that. Uh, so ideally you wanna do something like, you know, provide a default um, default flight information. Maybe if it's not found there, you always, you can create a default var variable uh, with just empty forms or something like that, inform data, or you can always pull the, the first record, okay? Just just so that, it, that the, the page doesn't crash. But again, explain why is that, okay? So, I mean, what I do is this. So, so for example, you wanna check to say, um, if the index is not equal to a negative one, right? If, it's, if that's not the case, then go ahead and assign that to that new flight. Otherwise, then you want to put a flight is equal to maybe props of flight data of the first one, index one. So this is like the default here, right? And, and I can't put const because of that nature, so I put var here. Okay. So either either that or that, um, or maybe var and that, right? Usually this is not great, but you know, actually you do this. You, you pull this from here, pull this outside like this, right? You can call it, um, yeah, let is fine. And then um, inside here, then you don't need the else part, okay? Either one or the other, right? You know for sure that if it's not there, then it will be the default. If it's there, then you will overwrite that with a new one, okay? So again, this part here is how it's done. You saw the if and else. Um, if you want to make it shorter, you can also do this. So you can do like um, flight is equal to, uh, you can put a comparison. Okay, I'll be right here. We'll say, um, and, and we'll comment this out, okay? If you like this approach, Let's say a constant flight is equal to, you do a comparison, right? index is not equal to a minus one. If that is true, then you put the flight of the index, again, using the turning operator. Otherwise, you go ahead and pull the default, which is the zero, okay? So this is also how you could achieve the same idea. Okay, so I'll keep it this way and see if this is working or not. So I got my ID, my flight information, that's all I need. And then now I'm ready to go and uh, create another, um, reference. So now we're going to create the form first. So before, um, uh, well, actually, you know, let's create a new form uh, object to bind to each of the form elements. Um, you know what, maybe we should do that first. Let's copy the add uh, flight form here. The add form here uses a function, which is good. I'm going to copy this and just rename it, okay? So copy and paste right in here. I will rename it to um, edit light form .js. Okay, so this is edit form. And so here you're gonna change it to edit flight form. And I don't need all these here. Oh yeah, the flight data props. Uh, you can leave it as is, but um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it all out, make it clean short. And you can export this out right away. And if you export that already, then they don't want to do it again at the bottom. Okay, so down here, just don't don't do it twice. 
but you can do it at top. Okay, so now we got the props and we just go ahead and do some cleaning here first. Maybe let's do this while we're here. Okay, so again, we're using reference. So um, actually, you know what, actually no, we have to go up here first. So I'm gonna close all these and now. Okay, so the flight data, as you can see, will look something like this. I'm going to copy one of these and I'm going to add it to my edit flight. We're going to create a reference object. So we'll call it like um, uh, constant new flight, uh, uh, just information. And this will actually equal to this new flight like this. We look like this, we format this. Okay, but you, we don't want to put the data here. So instead, this will actually be reference type. So we're going to use a React that create ref function. Okay, for all of them. So basically all these have the same. We're just going to initialize these and bind these to the form. So we do that. And then we are now good to go. Okay. And <clears throat> all right. So this is our flight. Let me put over here, I guess. It makes more sense that way. And let's put it this way. All right. So this is our new flight references. And we're going to bind this to the form control uh, over here. So over here, we'll bind it to the uh, control here. So that's our new flight uh, data. And then now that we had our flight form, we need to import it in here. So up here, I'm going to import the uh, flight, I mean, edit flight form. Very good. From the edit flight form. Okay, perfect. And then, <clears throat> So down here, we're going to use it right in here. Then we're going to display that inside here. So we're going to pass in to edit flight form. Oops, before I forget, we need the flight information that is coming from the flight. That's this flight right here. We found a flight already. We need to use that to pre-fill, populate the form. We also need to you know, get all these references so we can bind to each component. So we need the new flight as well. Again, just very simple, new flight. Okay. Uh, not only that, we need to also include the submit uh, uh, handle of function because in the parent class, I mean, yeah, the parent class, the editor here, right? We're gonna have a, uh, a function to handle the submit. When the user submit the data, it needs to come back here. So we need to create a function to do that. Um, so let's do that. Uh, let's do array in here as well. Put a function call handle submit. Use error function. It's going to take a uh, event or just E for short. Then we're going to do a E dot uh, prevent default right away before we forget. So we do the handle submission here. And eventually we're gonna do a, we're gonna process the uh, function, we're gonna call this function um, update flight in there. Okay, so we need to pass this down over to the child as well. So we need to put here, handle submit. Okay, so three things are going down to the child component. And I think that is good for now. So we save this for now. And then now we're gonna go to the child component, which is this edit form here. And we're gonna change these, okay? So we need to change the value here to a default value. And the data coming in is gonna be coming up with the props. So instead of just flight, we just props.flight. Okay, this flight here is referring to this flight right here. Okay, so we have the flight we have the new flight and we have the handle submit coming from this parent component. So in here, where all these are, we're just, just gonna basically replace the value with the default value. Okay, okay, it has to be a default value. We're gonna bind that to the props flight. And then we're not gonna have the handle change by the way, okay? We, because this is not a control component. We don't wanna do that. I mean, you can if you want to, but in this example here, we're not gonna do that. So um, the ID field also, I don't want to 
allow user to change the ID. We can display there, but we want it to be read only. So this is the only field that you will add the read only attribute right here, okay, for the ID field so that you cannot edit that field. The rest should be editable. So we got there. And then so we can remove that. And this will be the default value and props flight airline. And then same thing here. Uh, we're not going to do any unchanged. So it will be default value. This is already kind of uh, created for us. So that's good. Um, that's fine. This one here again, default value, uh, props.flight. And then no handle change, delete that one. Same thing here. I'm gonna remove the handle change. And a few more default value props that flight departure date, no change. Change. Okay, and then finally down here is the handle submit also coming from the props. Okay, so as you can see, it looks very similar to the add form, right? We're just basically changing the two default value, remove the unchange, and then everything is now good to go. Now, the next thing we want to do is now, so the, the data here is bound to the, um, is you would, you would see that the value will be, will be pre populated with this data if it's correct, okay? And then now, the next thing we're gonna do is we need to bind to the reference. So that's the next thing we're gonna do for each of these fields. We're gonna bind to the reference attribute and it's gonna be equal to the props dot new flight ID. So it'll be the exactly same as this, um, except it's from the new flight. That is this guy right here. This guy is binding to each of these uh, fields. And this is the reference type so that React will know which property binds to which component. Okay, so by doing this way, that's what we don't need to do like document that get element by ID and so forth. It will, it will automatically bind to that field for us. Okay, so we're gonna copy this again and go to every field down here and we're gonna change it a little bit later. I'm gonna do this um, for now. So that one, this one here, all you, basically all the input fields. And okay, so we're gonna change this to be the um, return date. This is departure date. Port. Port. And then return type. Line, flight number, and ID. Okay, so it's all bound to that reference object. So we can save this one for now. And I think that is it for this simple one. Um, we shall see if it's working or not. Okay, <clears throat> so the edit flight has the data coming in here. We don't do anything yet um, for now. We can, uh, we can, you know, Display some data um, in a minute. Uh, okay, so let's see. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what's like. So let's go and save this and recheck our application and see if it's if it's working still. Okay, see so crashes here. We refresh it again. Okay, so uh, components edit flight. Uh, puzzle export edit flight. Okay, I probably did I do it wrong. Okay, let's do again. I forgot. Maybe I forgot to put the default or something. Yeah, when you export, yeah, you have to say export um, default. Forgot the word here. For that one, the edit flow also, I need to say export default. Okay, let's try again. And here we go. Uh, okay. Edit flight form, possible export default, uh, edit flight form line. Line 47, right? So let's try one more time. Um, okay, or seven. Hmm. 
wonder if I didn't like it or not. You know, okay, fine. We'll just do the all with it. I'm not sure why I thought I should be able to do that, but okay, so we we'll export the bottom, it's okay. Um, the um, edit uh, flight right here. And then we need to also export a flight form. Bottom here, very bottom. Okay, so let's see if that likes it. Okay, let's see one more time. Yeah, I knew that was not the right, the right one. It, it should be allowed it, allowed. Maybe I just had it incorrectly imported. Um, the edit, let's try one more time. When I import the edit flight, edit flight form it is coming in. What I do wrong? Okay, let's let's fix this. What I do here? Edit flight add form. Ah, no curlies. Okay, okay, okay. I hear you. I hear you. All right, so if that's the case, then that was it. So if, before it was, it was okay. I, if you leave it export default function here, it should be fine. Okay, it was not the error. The error was I had it wrong. So that means my app is also, yeah, should be correct. Okay, great. So now that's true one more time. There we go. Okay, so in the edit here, as you can see, we go to edit and nothing shows up yet, which is fine, right? You expect to have some errors and we're gonna, to F12 and see what's going on. You can inspect it here. So refresh a few times, go to edit and we'll tell you error right away. So the very first one on top, we'll tell you, so it cannot read probably this undefined reading zero. Okay, edit flight line 16. So if you click on that, it's basically from here saying that um, we did not find the flight of zero. Uh, that means that the flight index doesn't exist. I mistyped the word flight. See, you can see here, it should be flight not fight data. So, um, so that's very, very um, uh, bad on me, but I'm surprised the browser didn't even uh, let me catch that. So this would be flight data. And I think that's okay now. One more time. Okay, here we go. You see the data is, is up and populated, right? So refresh this again. Once you do that, notice if you refresh it, you lose all your layout. So that's, that's just because when you fresh it, you load the whole thing halfway through. It did not from the beginning, so you lost your design. So what you're gonna do in this case, you go back to your flight or any of the other pages and refresh that to get the same load back, okay? And then now you click edit. So here we go. So our form is now pre-populated with the data that we need. So again, notice this is grayed out because we read we made that to read only. So you're not gonna be able to edit this field, okay? These are okay. If I change some data here, okay, I should be able to do all that stuff here and submit. Once I click the submit here, it's going to update the data. Maybe I'll show it. I will hide the form like I did with the add component and just say edit it successfully. And you go back to the fly, you should be able to see the changes occur here. Okay, we didn't implement that here, but okay. So you see the nights working, right? If I go to flight number three, it does low flight three. All right, so again, I will show you the little tiny error where you forgot, if you forgot to do the parse. So let's say if I do not do the parse here, okay? Because if that's the case, it is not gonna match, you know, the type and the integer to a string, it's gonna fail. It's gonna give you a negative one index and, and um, make sure I put it here just in case you might, you might forget. So that it's gonna load the first object all the time. Okay, save that, go back here and you will see that I refresh it again. If I load number four, right? You see, it'll always grab the first one because it will never match it, okay? So if you don't take care of that, it will crash your site. So again, just parse it. Okay, put that back in here, just in case. Okay, so we got the form data field and uh, all good to go. Now we can click the submit button, right? We click the submit, let me, let me um, yeah, I can't do it. Down the bottom here, when it's some click and submit, it's gonna call the function handle submit. Notice I did not pass anything to it because all the data fields are bound to this new flight object, right? To the reference property here. So we click the submit, 
then back in here is going to call this function up in the parent right here, right, which is in here. And we're going to use the prevent default so your form doesn't reload. If it reloads, you, all your data is gone. We want to do that first. And then now, how do you get the data from this new guy? Okay, you cannot just go and, you know, submit this back to the parent, the root. You have to get the data from that field. And so um, you can <clears throat> just basically update this flight data because initially, this is the single flight that has the information that we need to pre-populate our form. But because we never updated, it, you know, it, it keeps the old data and we never touched it because, you know, we didn't really do any change to that. So now you can basically reassign the data from these fields to this object's data. Okay, so that is how we're gonna do this. So um, <clears throat> just to see what the data looks like, you can, you can console log. Um, actually, yeah, console, if you console log um, new flight data, okay? I don't think you're gonna see anything there. If you click on that, and go and uh, to the browser. Let's say we go to edit the flight number one. And if I click submit, okay, you see here, it comes in here like an object, okay? So the data comes here is still, I didn't, I didn't make any changes, but that is the, the, the case. Let's clear this again. And let's go back and clear again. And let's load a new flight. Let's change, I'm changing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And then like, like X something, I just put X, a bunch of X here, okay? And if we click Submit, okay. So you see down here, this object, I'll make it a little bit bigger. You can see that each of these has the airline, okay? So notice has the current property. That is where we're gonna get the data from. The current is pointing to that particular input tag, right? Each of these tag is assigned to each of these uh, current attributes. So the airline, as you can see, current, and the value, is indeed a line X, right? Because now we change that, it's bound to that property. So we get the, uh, whatever this is, is new flight dot airline dot current dot value will give you that, right? So you get like a couple uh, uh, layers down. So same thing with the other information here, the airport, uh, the flight number, I, I don't, right? So again, new flight number under uh, that current that value will give you the flight number, as you can see here. Okay, so that is the idea uh, for this. So now let's go back to the code and then we're going to update our new data. I'm gonna turn this off, which is the flight. So I'll do a flight, um, the flight ID is, we don't have to change that ID because we did, we did not even make any changes. So we didn't we need to touch that one. Uh, basically just the flight number, right? The flight number is assigned with the new flight, that flight number, that current, that value. Okay, that is basically all you have to do. We do all of that again. So I'm gonna just duplicate this a couple of times. Uh, and then we fill all these in here. So we have the flight number, we have the, uh, the airline goes in here, we have the trip type goes in here, actually here and also here. <clears throat> Archer date. Archer Airport, the arrival airport, Archer Airport, time, date, do two more, one more, return date. Okay, so that is the new information. If it's hard to see, I'm gonna do this, it's easier to see. Okay, so here we go. And um, that is the new information already. We are updating the flight data, which is this single flight here, the original one, with the new data. And then after that, we just basically pass it up to the function, to the parent. So we invoke the uh, function call. Uh, what happened here? Let me format this. Oh, okay. Oh, well, it's ugly again. It's okay. Uh, through the props.updateFlight, has in here, as you can see, two things, the index and the new flight, right? So the index and then the flight, which is again, just this flight here, okay? The index we already calculated up here, remember? We, we found the index already here, so we need that position so you will know where to find, where to update inside our, um, our add data. Let's close this. Okay, so we add it, we can pass the data, 
to the update, it goes up to the parent, which is this here, go to update data. This function here is down here, we create it down the bottom. Let me go here. So down here, takes the index and the update flight data, the new flight, and then we basically, you know, update the index position with the new data, we update the state, and then we're done. Okay? So let's see if this works. Let's save that and go back to the browser. And let's start fresh again, refresh everything here so it's clean. I'm gonna close this now and let's do the edit for the United here. Let's put it here, one, two, three, four, five. Just put some gibberish here, we know it's working. Okay, and click submit. Okay, we didn't do any update, uh, any feedback, so we don't know, but let's see if it's there. Let's go to the flight list. And now you see that the data has been updated. Okay, and if you go to the next flight, right, Go back, it should still be there. And then if you load this again, right, you have the right data that we added earlier. So it's it's functional. Okay, so basically that's it. So now what we're gonna do is that when we submit the form, we want to be able to show a successful one like this. The F flight here, if you do a flight, something like that, I should put some version here. I did not do any validation, so I should take whatever data I put in here. And if I click add, right, you wanna see this screen here and the form should be wiped out. And so when I go back to my list, you'll see that at the bottom, we just added a new flight, right? Okay, so I wanna do that for the edit flight as well. Okay, so let's go back to the code and uh, do that little tiny feature. Basically over here, kind of similar to what you do with the show high button. And so what I wanna do is gonna pass a parameter from the root component, okay? Because this is not a, stateful component, so you did, therefore you cannot do that really easily without using any hooks. And we haven't learned hooks yet, so we don't uh, do that. So in the app.js component up here, I'm going to create another variable, um, like you see here, I create a variable called is submitted. Okay, I think this is the same one I use for um, uh, somewhere else, but I created a function called is submitted. And I have a function here also called reset submitted. I'll make this so it's quicker for us to, to run. Basically, I'm, all, all I'm doing is this. So when I go down to the update, after I update the data, once I update the state, then I want to reset this that is submitted variable to true, okay? And then we need to pass this parameter down to the child component, which is right here again, right? So we need to pass this down to this as well. So we're gonna go right over here. And if it's hard to see, just break into multiple line like this, so you can see them, okay? I'm gonna do a, um, is submitted is equal to this that is submitted. Okay, you're gonna pass that down to the child component because initially we set it to, uh, we set is variable to false. I'm gonna pass it down, so it's gonna be false and down into the child component here, the edit flight, where we show the form here, okay? So I wanna put here a, a message kind of similar to what we did the other one. So wrap this with a prop up is submitted. If this is true, right? If this is true, then go ahead and load that edit form. Okay, you put that, you put that colon, right? The question mark. If it's true, then load that. Otherwise, you put a colon and then load a message down here. And we'll put a paragraph uh, message, which is similar to the edit the app flight. So I'm gonna go back to the app flight form and basically copy this message, uh, the success form here, right here. This is the green one. Copy that and put it into our edit flight right down here. Okay, successfully updated or, or updated successfully. How you want to message here is fine. So this will it will show if it's um, if it's true, right? So in this case, you want to say if it's not true, then load the form first. Once we click the submit, then go ahead and you know it, it's going to go up to the parent. It comes back down. It's true, so therefore it's going to show this instead. Okay, one step at a time. Let's see if this will work first. Okay, so again, make sure you go up to the parent and create its variable. Set it to false and um, pass it to the child component. And then also added the update inside the uh, update flight function. 
And now let's go back to the page and see what happens. Let's go start all over again. I'm gonna edit here. I'm just gonna click submit. Okay, you can see that now it's successfully updated here. If I go back and let's try again. And then here is the, the dilemma, right? You see that it's still there because we'd never, we'd never update the edit form, okay? Because of that, therefore the content will always stay the same because we never update the flight either, the, the component, right? So therefore, this will always stays like this. And so if I go back and load any one of them, it will say, hey, it's already sub submitted, okay? How do we know this? You could test on here, you can test like over here. When we initially load and the edit flight, we pass this down to the edit flight. And right before we, you know, do all this stuff, initially it's gonna be false. So you can, you can put a function here. I mean, you can console log this, you can see. Um, console log. The, uh, we put it here at the um, is submitted. Put it here so we can see the, the status. Okay, so we can see what that looks like when we submit. So again, let's go back. Okay, so let's refresh everything again. And we'll hit the F12 so you can see the data down here. Click edit. Okay, we haven't, so you notice you can see that it is false. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make some change, like five, 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 click submit. You see that it goes back to the parent, it comes back down, and it's now the state of this variable is now true. Okay, so if I go back and do another edit, right, you see that it will always remain true, right, two times already, it was, it's still true because we'd never touch that variable again. So you must find a way to trigger that variable to be false after we submit. Okay, so again, it's because we never touched it again, it will remain true all the way until there, right? So how do we fix this? And um, there, I'm sure there are a couple of ways, but one, one way I'm gonna show you is create another function to reset it. So like in here, when, when we submit, okay, it comes back down initially, very first time, it's false. So therefore it loads the form. After we submit up there, it comes back down, it's now true. So it show this message. Once we are here, we need to invoke another function here to reset the submit a variable here. You can't do it here again because this variable is not uh, refactored. Uh, it's not um, uh, it's not stateful. So you have to submit it to the parent class up here, which is why I create a variable up here called reset submit. It's a function, okay? This error function is one parameter only. I'm basically the, I'm basically setting the submit variable to the value I passed to it, okay? So basically, if it's false, and it'll be true. If it's true, it'll be false. But in this case, I want it to be false all the time. Um, so you can you can do that, or you can just basically call it a false. It's fine, okay? So you don't you don't need a value if you don't want to. That's okay. I can just do that, <clears throat> okay? Just put here no value to force it to be false. And so down here in the edit flight, when I do that after that message, I'm going to invoke the props that is submitted function. And I'm gonna just call that function. Okay, so um, maybe nice and call it a reset, uh, reset is submit. I did not pass that, that in there. Uh, reset is uh, what I call it. Reset submit. Okay, so copy that, and now we need to also pass it down there as well. Okay, we pass it down to the child component, so we can invoke it to reset the default value back to false. So down here, then we call it reset submit. Invoke that function, and it should trigger that to be false. So the next cycle down, you come through right, is a reset to false but it will not render this component until you reload the next cycle through. So when you click the flight data, you come back in, then it'll be false, okay? It's a little bit tricky there. So that's how you would do this for the example. So let's go back and see if this works. Okay, save this. I will load in the, the data down here, you can see in the console. Uh, okay, come on, all right. So we go, edit. You can see it is initially it's false. I'm doing uh, something here update. Okay, so you know that at this state is true. 
but we already changed it to be false already until the next render, right? So you go back out, you come back again. You see that now it has been already been set to false again, right? Before it was true all the way. That's why we're able to see the data again. And now we do more submissions, right? And then you do again, now false, gone, come back in again. And so you can, uh, you can edit other ones just like that. Okay. So that is basically what you need to do for this assignment, right? So I'm going to turn this one off. You don't need to do that anymore. And uh, I think that's about it for this one. Uh, it seems to work beautifully. Now, the other one I want to do is the delete down here. Okay, so we'll delete data. Data is very simple. We are going to basically um, pass that down as well. So the, the delete, I also have to delete all. You can also implement that. I have a delete all button, but I'm going to do just a delete flight. And unless I already have that form there, which I don't think I do. Do I have it? Uh, the bottom. Yeah, I have a button down here called delete all, and it is there. So we're going to implement that as well. So do both of those. The delete will be similar, um, very easy. We just basically pass the ID to us. We know which ID you want to look. Fine. Again, we have to match that ID, find the index, and delete the record. So let's go back here. When I click the, at the delete, I need to pass this down to the child component. So here, you can pass it down. Um, delete flight. Uh, right. Also, the delete all. Okay. Um, no, 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 we're not. I'm sorry, I did it wrong. You don't have to because it's not in the edit flow. It's not here. It's already. Um, I think we already set it to the. Um, if I'm not mistaken. We already set it to the flight. Yeah, the flight here. So we had the, the delete flight, right? And then I also yeah want to add it here. So the delete flight and the delete all. So it'll be here. And again, let me just do this so it's easier to see. So we'll add the delete um, all here. Okay, so make sure you go to the flight, not the edit one. Okay, so now the ed, the flight list, which is this one over here. Okay, we have everything here, and then we pass it down. And here's the delete all, the delete flight. That would pass the ID, and then the delete all, which is um, this button right here. I, no, where is it? At the bottom. Uh, where did I put it? Maybe it's in the uh, oh yeah over here delete all okay so we already pass it down to the props called delete all um, let me see the flight list here table okay so delete all yeah we pass that already down to this bun function so I click would be prop delete all we call that function and then it loads these two functions right down here. So for the delete all is easier, we could do that first. Basically, we just say, um, uh, you know, this set set state. Going to set the flight data to uh, empty, just like that. OK, that's basically it. Uh, very simple like that. You can also do a, um, a slice. If you want to do the slice one, that's OK. That's fine, too. But set to blink, that should be uh, very simple. And the delete ID is what do like we did before, right? Did you mean to get the index? So again, const const index is equal to uh, this dot uh, state dot flight um, that uh, find index. Oops. The uh, object that matches the ID of the ID. So make sure when you pass it in, it has to be the, the integer type, which I think we already handled that uh, down in, in the class. So then we got the ID. Then again, if index, right, 
is not equal to a negative one. I'm going to do a this dot state. Um, actually, we're going to load the data first. Uh, yeah, let's load the data. Constant flight data is equal to this dot state that flight data, and I want to do a flight data of the uh, splice at the index position and remove one record. Okay, after that, we go ahead and then call the set state. And then we just put here flight data is equal to flight data. So we then update the state. Okay, so that's how you remove one data at a time. Simple like that, right? Okay, save and see if this works. Let's go over here and refresh the page. So we're going to delete the first record. As you can see, we removed the first one. Let's remove the fifth one and so forth. If we go remove all of them and uh, that didn't work. Yeah, I forgot to, um, why that didn't work. Okay, yeah, oh yeah, because I forgot to, uh, um, hmm. Let's try again. Delete all. That didn't seem to work. So delete all. Oh, oh, mistype. I knew something was not right. Out of it, it would. It should work. Okay. So let's try one more time. And refresh. And here we go. And boom. All right. So that's it. So I hope this one helps you to um, you know build this edit flight in the delete buttons. And uh, so I look forward to seeing what you have. Thank you.